Hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, on behalf of Mark, Alice, and myself, we want to greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we gather to spend time in the Word. Hallelujah. Amen. We're just, we're blessed that you can join us. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. And trust that you will be blessed by God's Word, that we all will. Amen. Because his power, his word has power in our lives. Get a, a deeper understanding. Yeah. So we've been talking, we, we started a number of weeks ago talking about the ministry of all believers. And that led into having the right mindset. Yet there, there is a mindset that we have to have. You know, it says in Philippians chapter 2 that we have the same mind, the same attitude mm -hmm. as, as Jesus Christ. Which is the attitude of the righteous. Which is indeed the attitude of the righteous. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been looking at this and the steps to that that all come from Paul's letter to the Philippians. And it all begin with the letter P. We talked about purpose. We talked about praise. We talked about price. We talked about power. We talked about perspective. And that led up to where we are today. We're going to be looking at perseverance. But before we do... Brother Mark here is going to ask for God's blessing on our time together. Oh, Lord, it says in the prayer that you taught, taught us, give us this day our daily bread. And Lord, we just want the bread of life coming out of your word. And just give it to us so we can you, you, use it for other people to bring them into the king, king, kingdom and to, and to walk the way we should. Amen. 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 And for, of course, for his glory. Always for his glory. All right. Um, as I said, we're going to talk today about, about perseverance. Mm -hmm. And, well, you don't, you don't know what perseverance is? Of course you do. Yes. <laughs> but I'm going to start. I, I want to start with a scripture from Paul's letter to the Romans. Paul said in Romans 8, 25, if we, but if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance, we wait eagerly for it. You know what? I, I'm waiting for the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I pray even so, come Lord Jesus. There are, there are other things in our life, in our ministry, that we have hope for. But it takes perseverance yes. in our lives to do it. In the King James Version, it says patience. That's just a side note. Well, that's because they're totally related. It's not It's not really a no, side. I was going to talk about that. The fact that it takes... Patience and perseverance are... They're related. They're not necessarily exactly the same, same. okay? To persevere means to persist in anything that you undertake. Mm -hmm. To persist in it, okay? To maintain a purpose in spite of difficulty, in spite of obstacles, or in spite of discouragement. To continue steadfastly, to endure. It comes from the Latin perseverare, which means to be severe, to be very serious. Okay? And as Christians, filled with the joy of the Lord, we're going to be very, very serious. Okay? Because the purpose of our lives and the things that we do... Are, they are life-giving because we are ambassadors for Christ. We bring the knowledge of his presence into every place. So this is serious business. It's not to be taken lightly. And I think in the world today, we tend to take, or the world tend to take, take things very, very lightly, mm -hmm. okay? Not seriously. We need to be serious about God, right, about the Lord, and to be serious about the things of God. Right, the world has a whatever attitude. That's exactly right. Uh, by the way, one of the schools that we started years ago, a Christian school we started, that, that was one of the banned words yes. for our students. <laughs> they were not allowed to say, whatever. Okay. No, you better know what you're doing. You know, better know what you're about, and you better be serious about it. So I think more often than not, when we think about persevering, we're thinking about our ability to deal with trials and tribulations, mm -hmm. right, uh, with afflictions. And remember... It says in Psalm 34, 19, that many are the afflictions of the righteous, okay? There are. I mean, 
If you've been saved for more than a day, you ought to know that when when we sing the great old hymn, I don't think we I don't hear it an awful lot anymore, but what a friend we have in Jesus. Yes, yeah. When you have a friend in Jesus, brother, I'll tell you what, you've got an enemy on the other side. That's right. Okay, and he's going to come against you. There's no doubt about it. So you've got to persevere against these things. Fortunately, and I've said this so much in, in the study that we've been doing, whatever God calls you to do, whatever he calls you for, he equips you for. So God has a plan to build endurance, perseverance in your life. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. It's like a, it's like a little in, uh, perseverance factory. In Romans 5, starting in verse 3, it says this, And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, mm -hmm. and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. It was Romans 5. Romans, Romans 5, starting, it's verses 3, 4, and 5, right? The, the point is, it's the hard things, persevering in the hard things. Well, well let me start in the order. It's when you can give thanks in all things. And that's, that's what it says, you know, Paul in his letter to the Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Mm -hmm. He says that we're to rejoice always, we're to pray without ceasing, we're to give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God for us in Christ Jesus. So when in the midst of these tribulations that are the afflictions that are common to, to, to the saints, what happens is when we're giving thanks, it, that builds that perseverance in our life. And that perseverance builds proven character. You know, one of the things in the world around us today that is one of the things that is so obviously lacking is character. There's no moral moral character, right? Yeah. Why? Because people aren't standing in the face of tribulation. And, you know, I don't want to get too far in, into this, but it's like, I'm a war baby. I was born during the Second World War. You, your house was born right after the, at the end of the Second World War, and you are way after. Way, way after. <laughs> Mark's one of the kids in the group. That's right. he's, he's, a, he's, he's our youth, youth group. group. He's our youth group, yes. <laughs> but the point is, that generation, I think, uh, was it Brokaw wrote a book, The Greatest Generation, about mm -hmm. the people, the yes. sacrifice that, that my father, Alice's father, that generation of people, your father too probably, right. that generation that went through the Second World War, they had to sacrifice. They, well, they also went through the Depression also. Well, that's a, not, it's a twofold thing. But no, still. Okay, but it's the the war that I'm concerned with. Okay, it was because of that hardship of the war that the the depression didn't bring about voluntary sacrifice, Mark. No, the war did. The war brought about voluntary sacrifice. Okay, and that's the that's the key to this that I'm, that I'm talking about. After that, they didn't want their children to have to suffer that same sacrifice. So what came out of that was what was known as the me generation. Those baby boomers were the me generation. They, their parents baby, babied them, coddled them, gave them whatever they wanted, spoiled them. Yes. As a reaction to the hardship that they had gone through. It wasn't a good thing. Yeah. I mean, it's from a natural point of view, it's, under, it's easy to understand. But because they didn't face those trials and tribulations, that proven character was not generated in them, not built in them. Because that's where the Word of God says it comes from, right? But that proven character brings about hope. And hope doesn't disappoint. Why? Because the love of God is important to our hearts, all right? right? Hope doesn't disappoint because the Lord has spoken. Because Psalm 34, which said, many of the afflictions of the righteous, mm -hmm. goes on to say, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Mm -hmm. we, that's the hope that we have. That no matter what we face, God is going to deliver us. Right. He has promised that over and over and over through Scripture. He has promised. He said, and he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He is there, and he is there to deliver us. But we have to hold on to the promise. We have to hold on to the word. That's the perseverance. You've got to... Do you know that the word of God can be difficult? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if, you, if you don't know that, you better go back and check where this all starts when Jesus says, you know, nobody can follow me. 
unless they die to themselves, unless they deny themselves, unless they give up all their possessions. This is not, Christianity was never a, a, a wimpy religion, okay? Think, but here's the crux of that matter. From Paul's second letter to Timothy, I want to read from chapter 4, right? Okay. Second Timothy chapter 4, I'm going to start at verse 3. I'm going to read verses 3 and 4, I think. For the time will come when they will not. Now, he's talking about the church. He's talking about Christians or, you know, this, the people of God, right? He's saying, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. So first he talks to Timothy about, and I, I brought two things together there. Right. He's talking about how in the, in the perilous last days is what he's on about in chapter 3, mm -hmm. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and, and right and mm -hmm. 4. He's saying men, will, he's talking about Christians, will not endure sound doctrine. But how, they, what they want to do is they want to hear what they want to hear. So they'll accumulate teachers who will teach exactly what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul, he said he hasn't reached perfection, but what he has done is he has put that behind him and he presses on towards the goal of the upward call. Of God. We have to press on. That's part of persevering. You've got to press on and push on. You've got to endure, right? But like Mark said, perseverance is about patience. Yes. Okay? And patience is about faith. It's about trust. It's about trusting in God's plan and trusting in God's timing. Okay? You see, we are a generation of instant gratification. We want what we want, and we want it now. Isn't that true? Absolutely. You know, it says, it says that Abraham, having, or having, no, having patiently waited, he received the promise. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have to have that patience. That, and patience you have to, it means you have to press on. You have to persevere. Okay. You can't expect everything now because God is working things in his time. We have gotten to that place where we expect everything to be done. We're instant. We're instant gratification. You know, Mark and Alice and I lived in Central America. Um, we lived there as missionaries. Out in the, we lived out in the bush. And we lived right on the outskirts of a little village. Uh, and the nearest, our nearest neighbors. That makes it sound like the little white picket fences, doesn't it? <laughs> don't, don't get carried away. They had Frank and Myrtle. They had 10 children mm -hmm. in a little, little wooden ramshackle house that they had. So when they wanted breakfast in the morning, now I have one breakfast. Maybe you'll go to McDonald's or someplace like that where you know you can get it right now. Well, they had the 10 kids and those kids would have to go to work. But maybe two of the boys would go out into the bush mm -hmm. and get firewood. A couple, couple of the girls would go down to the river, yeah. not close by. Yeah. If it was it was not the rainy season, they'd have to go down to the river and carry buckets of water back. No 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 water on tap there. Mm -hmm. And Myrtle, the mother, she'd start preparing food. And, I mean, it was a it was quite an operation just to prepare a breakfast. Mm -hmm. it, it took patience. It took perseverance. It wasn't instant by any means. They're hand in hand almost, aren't they? Yes, they are. So, but we have become, we have come to that place in the modern Western world, particularly, and that, where we expect everything right now. Instantaneous. So we've not been taught to be patient. We've not been taught to right. persevere. I mean, you know, you, like I said, you go to a fast food restaurant and the food's not there in two minutes. You know, you're all upset. All right. I want to say that, that other thing, that phrase again, though. Mm -hmm. Perseverance is about trusting in God's plan yes. and trusting in God's timing. God's timing is not like ours. Not at all. You know, it says that to, to the Lord, a day is as a thousand years, a thousand years as a day. Um, 
when did Jesus come into the world? You know, this got through the celebration of, of Christmas. When exactly was Jesus born? In the fullness of time. And that is the only proper answer. That's right. And that's what the scripture says. In the fullness of time. Don't you know that people waited for a long time? Yes. I mean, don't you know that there were people waiting for his coming? Mm -hmm. They had to be patient. They had to wait till God's time. Till God chose the time. The people of God, when they were in Egypt, they were being mistreated. They were they were being abused. But they had to wait for God's time. And God's time included waiting for Moses That's right. to be prepared. It takes perseverance. It takes patience. It takes trust that God is in control and that God knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. If you believe that God is in control, if you believe that God knows what he is doing, well, then you can patiently wait. Because you know the situation is in hand. Right. The situation is under control. It's when, it's when you're not convinced of that fact that you become filled with anxiety. You become anxious about your situation. And how many times does God say, and this is not an encouragement or meant to be just an encouragement, not just, it is a commandment of God when over and over and over the Lord says, fear not. Yes. Be anxious for nothing. Because if you're being anxious, you are not walking in faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. I mean, these are all tied together. It is your faith that will give you perseverance because you know that God, who loves you, is in charge of the situation. Mm -hmm. He is in control. He is. And he's got a lot of orchestrating to do to get things in place, especially when mm -hmm. he has to wait for people to move. <laughs> hey. Hey, well, it, it comes to the place where we have to understand that God doesn't think the way we do. Yeah. He is conditioning us, and that's what this is about, having the mind of Christ to think the way he does. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. He doesn't have to renew his mind. Yeah. Okay? I always think of the, the account of Naaman the leper. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar yeah. with Naaman the leper? Of course. Yeah, here's a man, who, not, a, not a Jew, not a, not a believer. He has leprosy, and somebody says to him, well, there is a prophet of God over in Israel, and you go to him, he's got, the, he's got the power of God. I'm paraphrasing, right? So he goes, and on the way, Elisha, the prophet, knows he's coming, and he sends his servant out to meet Naaman on the way, mm -hmm. before he even gets there. And he tells him, go dip in the Jordan River seven times, and you'll be healed. So Naaman, he goes to the Jordan, and he dips. Well, what would have happened if he had only dipped five times and said, well, I, nothing's happening. I dipped and I dipped and I dipped and nothing's happening. And he gave up. What would have happened? He wouldn't be healed. Nothing. That's what would have happened. Mm -hmm. Nothing. What would have happened after six times? He said, well, you know, this just isn't working. I'm leaving. But on the seventh time, he came out of that water and he was cleansed. That leprosy was totally gone. Why does God do that? I have no clue. I have no clue. Other than the fact I know it's his plan. And his plan is the right plan. You know why? Because his plan is a plan for our life. It's a plan for welfare. It's not a plan for evil. So if you trust in him and you trust that he is in control and he knows what he's doing, he does. But doesn't he do that because of obedience? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I can't and answer testing that question. Because even like with uh, Moses and the rock, when he, when he was told well, to strike it. I don't know that he does it to make you obedient. He does it, we have to exhibit obedience. Right. He, he's testing our obedience, I think. Well, okay, you can think that. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I think. Well, no, that's not a bad yeah. answer. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to debate it. Not, no, it's not no, a bad no. answer. Right. He could have he just as well said three times and it still would have taken, mm -hmm. you know, I, the point is, his ways are not our ways. That's what it says in Isaiah 55. His ways are higher than our ways. There are unknowns. Yeah, there are unknowns that we don't know. <laughs> yes. right. He's also testing their faith. Well, and, and what do you always say? Faith leads to, leads to, the obedi faith leads to obedience, and obedience, obedience leads, leads to, to the, the promise. To the blessing. Or the 
Yeah, God bless you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. that, that's true. I do. I say that a yeah. lot because uh, I'm doing I know I've had the opportunity. I go in a lot of places and I be teaching. I teach a lot of pastors. I say, you know, how many of you believe that, that faith leads to the blessings of God? And of course, the, the, oh, the answer is yes. You know, I, I believe that. Well, actually, what Mark said, and this is what I've been teaching, is that's not quite right. Faith leads to obedience. Obedience leads to the blessing. By faith, Abraham and obeyed. By faith, Abraham obeyed. And that certainly led to the blessing. Okay? Deuteronomy 28. I mean, go read it. It says, if you hear his voice and if you obey his voice, then the blessings of God will come upon you. They'll come upon you. They'll overtake you. They'll flat run you down. Right. He'll bless you in the city. He'll bless you in the country. He'll bless you going in. He'll bless you coming out. I mean, it's just... He'll bless you, but it requires that you obey and do what he tells you to do. Or persevere. I'm getting I'm, this this is so simple to think of. And then I this is an example that I've been using for years because it just struck me one time. If I got a phone call from somebody and they said, My goodness gracious, there's a multi a gazillionaire down at McDonald's and he's standing there giving away hundred dollar bills, as many as you can carry away. You better get down there right quick and get your fair share. So I hop in the car and I drive off and I go right over to Burger King because I like Burger King better. Am I going to get any $100 bills? Not there. He's not there. And it's not because he's punishing me because I didn't go there. It's just because I didn't go to that place where I was supposed to be. What's that black spiritual? There's an old black spiritual <laughs> that I say every time. <laughs> Alice and I were in a, I was preaching in a little... Pentecostal church years and years ago and they sang a song I want to be under the spout where the blessings come out that's the only part of the song we know <laughs> gotta be in the right place well, yeah I want to be under the spout where the blessings are I want to be where the blessings are and I know where the blessings are here's another one of those P words for you presence yes. in the presence of God is where you will find the blessings that's of right. God okay Amen. okay Patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it is. Okay. And it, it says, you know, for when God made the promise to Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself saying, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply you. And having patiently waited, he obtained the promise. Mm -hmm. That's Hebrews 6, 13, 14, and 15. You know, it, it says in Ecclesiastes that the end of a matter is better than its beginning. Think about the, the many, many accounts. I mean, I, I can, Joseph in the Bible, mm -hmm. you know, his brothers, God gave him a vision, showed him how he was going to exalt him. His brothers throw him down a well. His brothers, out of grace, they take him out of the well and sell him into slavery into Egypt. Goes on years, right? It's all in God's plan. All in God's plan and God's timing. Mm -hmm. Because at the fullness of time, when there was a massive famine, his brothers came, not knowing that he was even there, mm -hmm. seeking food. And Joseph said, well, you know, you meant this for evil, but God meant it for good. God was working his plan all along, right? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Want to talk about timing? They had to face this, this command to bow down and worship an um, idol, a statue of Nebuchadnezzar. And they refused to do it. They would not bow before anybody but the Lord God Almighty. Well, at that point, they had no idea of whether God would deliver them physically or not. That's what they said. But they knew that God is God. So they got tossed into the furnace. Jesus was with them because he said... The three of them went into the you. fire and four of them marched around because God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's right. He delivered them from the midst of that. I mean, the great example. What's the great example of... How about Lazarus? Yes. Four days dead, stinking dead. But Jesus showed up. He, did, he didn't fail. It was his sense of timing. And you know what? It was actually absolutely his sense of timing. Absolutely. He could have been there while Lazarus was still... When he heard that Lazarus was sick on the death, you know what he did? He, he stopped yeah. and waited. He had purpose in that to show when when his sister, Martha, when Lazarus' sister, when Lazarus's sister met Jesus on the way to the tomb, 
She said if he'd been here, he'd be alive today. I'm paraphrasing. That's what, that's what he said. He said, well, there's a resurrection. She says, I know that. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. So he stood in front of that grave, stood in front of that tomb, and he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus. Lazarus come right back to life. And he said, come forth. God will never show up late. He'll be there when you need him. That's right. But you have to persevere. You have to press on. You have to trust in him. You have to trust that he loves you, that he hasn't given up on you. He hasn't forgotten you. That's right. You have to trust that nothing is impossible with him. Nothing is impossible with him. You have to trust in his plan. You have to trust in his sense of timing. It's not about you bending God to your will. It's about you bending to his will. I, I just, I'm going to have to end on this. We're running out of time already. My goodness gracious. When God first gave me this message years and years ago, um, and it's, that's a long story, so I'm not going into it, but I, one of the things that struck me, because at the time, there was a very famous television series. It was Star Trek, mm -hmm. the original Star Trek. Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock and Bones. And, you know, and that, that was a unique show at the time. It was, it was a groundbreaking show. And I thought about the many times that every, virtually every single week, you know, something would go wrong with the ship. Should I do that? It was Scotty, the engineer, would say, Kevin, I cannot hold it together any longer. It's the dilithium crystals. They're shaking apart. The dilithium crystals are always shaking apart. There's always something going wrong with the ship. That's right. And, of course, you know, if you've been saved more than a day, you know, the Klingons were off the port bow. The enemy was there waiting to kill them. Because when, when the devil strikes, brother, it comes and it comes, all right? And yet, at the end of the show, the dilithium crystals held together, the Klingons had been dispatched, and the starship Enterprise sailed off into the, into the galaxies to come back next week for another episode. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, why? You know, why? And yet, you know, I've said this in churches, and I get, the, I get kind of a blank stare. Everybody's thinking. Everybody's thinking about why. Yeah. It's yeah. so simple. It's in the script. It's in the script. That's why. And we have the We script. have the script. The Word of God is our script. Yes. And it's written from the beginning to the end. And the end of the matter is better than its beginning. It's going to happen the way God said it's going to happen. That's right. It's in the script. Hallelujah. We have to come to that place where we trust in that. Right. That we trust in the love of God in our lives. And then you will persevere. You will have patience. You will have glorious patience. So, Father, we thank you for the fruit of your Holy Spirit in our lives, Lord God. That you bring about that patience. That you bring about that perseverance. That we might stand. And that we would stand. Having done all, we would stand, Lord God. And that through it all, we would give glory to you. We would glorify you and glorify your name, Lord God proclaiming our trust in your love, proclaiming our trust in your power, proclaiming that we are satisfied, well satisfied with your timing of it. Oh, yeah. We praise you and thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I didn't finish today, so <laughs> come on back again next week and be with us as we finish this up. God bless you and goodbye. Bye.